before we get started, let's check out the links in my description. We all want nice things. We want the car, we want a house, we want a high limit credit card. But if you don't have at least a 680 credit score, you're not even in the game. So click this link here to know where you stand and get your free credit scores from all three bureaus. That will be Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And also get your reports. If you would like to be free and become financially independent through entrepreneurship, click this link here to be free. If you'd like to get cash back, which is a discount during shopping, please click this link here to see my favorite cash back sites. And if you enjoy the music you hear in the background, please click the link here and subscribe to It's OAC. Hello everyone, welcome back to Community Wealth. And today I'm gonna come to you with a different angle to this PPP situation. It's not particularly fraud this time. It's, I wouldn't call it bait and switch either. It's finding loopholes and figuring out how to get funds and utilize them in a way that's not meant, that it wasn't meant to be used for, but then you turn around and use it in that way anyway. And you can't get in trouble for it. Quite interesting. And as you know, had to be some big time company to do this. It's an article I came across and we're gonna get right into it. So let's go. This was out of ProPublica.org. This company got a $10 million PPP loan, then closed its plant and moved manufacturing jobs to Mexico. Think about that. They got a $10 million PPP loan. They closed the plant and moved manufacturing jobs to Mexico. Now I didn't read the article yet, so we're gonna read this together, but I think I got an idea where this is gonna go. And if I see it, of course you're gonna say, well, you read it first, but I already have a thought process in my mind. If I don't see it, I tell you what I thought it was gonna be. But if I see it, then it'll confirm where we were going with this. All right. So many American businesses receive millions in federal pandemic aid intended to protect workers, but exploited loopholes and rule changes to lay off those employees anyway. Crazy, right? So here we go. Late last summer, after churning along through the pandemic with only a two-week pause, managers at Freight Car America called hundreds of workers into the brick area at the company's factory near Muscle Shoals, Alabama to tell them that the plant was closing for good. For some employees, the news wasn't a shock. They'd been hearing rumors that management would move the work elsewhere for years. The timing, however, seemed odd. Only a few months earlier, the publicly traded company had received a $10 million paycheck protection program loan, the maximum amount available under a pandemic relief program designed to keep workers employed. Some had believed the funds would keep the doors open for a little while longer. Nevertheless, the plant's managers announced that all production would move to Freight Car's new facility in Mexico, which meant most of the assembled workers would lose their jobs. Jim Meyer, Freight Car America CEO told ProPublica in an email that he had not intended to shutter the plant when he received the PPP money and that it had allowed the company to keep workers on the job through most of 2020 despite a sharp drop off in new orders. Robert Bullman, however, thinks the $10 million just helped Freight Car Show's plant keep producing while company officials got ready to shut it down. When the Mexican plant opened, we were told at the beginning they would just be helping shows and making parts for the trains, said Bowman, who worked at the Alabama plant for seven years before getting laid off last year. But the whole time it was a setup, we were gone. Now that's kind of where I was going with that. Not exactly on point. That's kind of where I was going with that. 
my thought process was okay they got this money they found a cheaper spot elsewhere outside of the country and they don't have to keep employees they can get cheaper employees over the border but at the same time they're keeping employees per se because they had employees over there anyway because remember they said the Mexican plant was supposed to help supposed to help out the American workers so they still technically kept employees just not the ones on the American side see how that's working now again I thought they moved the whole thing to Mexico but there was never a Mexican plant but now since I'm reading this, I'm seeing that they already had a plant that was in operation to help move along orders in America. But what it sounded like happened was they got this $10 million, shut it down in America, and kept the Mexican plant open and said, hey, look, we still kept our employees. We just couldn't keep all of them. It wasn't enough. We kept our employees. So we're going to just move all operations there because it's cheaper slick right freight car america isn't the only large company to have taken out a multi-million dollar paycheck protection program loan and then laid off a substantial chunk of its workforce an analysis of applications for trade adjustment assistance which the federal government provides to workers whose jobs have disappeared due to imports shows that at least half a dozen companies that applied for more than a million dollars apiece in ppp loans terminated more than 50 workers in 2020 after their aid was approved. To be clear, the companies may have compiled with program rules which put a premium on getting money out fast. The regulations changed frequently in the months after the Congress established the PPP as part of the CARES Act in March 2020, and the law was later amended to allow more of the money to be used for non-payroll expenses. The law also contained many exemptions that stretch the definition of what qualifies as a small business. A paper mill in Northeast Washington State called Pondere Newsprint, for example, went bankrupt and laid off 150 workers two months after being approved for a $3.46 million loan. Its bankruptcy trustee John Munding said the money was used to pay workers and the government forgave the loan, while the company's assets were acquired by a private equity firm. A Nebraska aircraft parts manufacturer called Royal Engineer Composites was approved for a $2.74 million loan in April 2020 in order to support 250 jobs but laid off 99 workers by mid-May. The company declined to comment. Canadian-owned Supreme Steel took $1.69 million in May 2020 for its plant in Portland, Oregon, which it closed five months later, terminating 112 employees. Spokesperson Randy Burns said that the closure was the result of market forces and declined to answer further questions. Man, these cats are dirty. So it's these big companies, they, they, they dirty. In order for PPP loans to be forgiven, the Federal Small Business Administration initially required borrowers to spend 75% of the funds on payroll over eight weeks, since the maximum PPP loan amount was for two and a half times the company's average monthly payroll in 2019, that should have guaranteed that wages and hours could be maintained as required by the CARES Act. In the case of freight car and some other borrowers, the original eight-week cover period of the PPP loan passed before layoffs occurred, allowing the companies to have their loans fully forgiven. But the other cases may have easily qualified as well because Congress changed the rules. Hmm. Okay. So... They just had to keep them on for that eight week period. And after that eight week period, you're forgiven. Boom, y'all gone now. Real slick, real slick. Last June, after businesses protested that they couldn't spend their PPP money fast enough in a stalled economy, the legislation was amended to require only that 60% of a loan go toward a worker's pay. And the covered period was extended to 24 weeks since borrowers had to spend less of their loan on payroll over a longer period to keep the money they had wide leeway to let people go as they saw fit it's another slick way to do it wow that's slick <laughs> that's crazy so you only had to spend 60 percent on workers so 
you get to lay people off with the wow and you had a longer time to use it yeah man real cutthroat out there it wouldn't be difficult to lay off 50% of your workforce and still get full forgiveness said Eric Kodish an attorney at Lane Powell who has helped many clients with their PPP applications the SBA has not publicly released data on forgiveness of specific loans but aggregate statistics show that so far out of all applications processed more than 99% of the total dollar value has been forgiven the SBA declined to comment on individual borrowers or identify loans that have been forgiven. There's another reason why a casual reader of the CARES Act might think companies will not qualify for PPP money. Many are actually very large businesses. In general, the CARES Act set an upper size limit of 500 employees with a few exceptions. The law required SBA to count all affiliate companies toward that total. That will include companies owned by private equity firms as well as subsidiaries contained within holding companies. It exempted, it exempted hotels, restaurants, and franchises, but no other industries. That's why Shake Shack and Ruth's Chris Steakhouse qualified for loans, though each returned the money after a barrage of negative press coverage. However, a number of program nuances allow large companies to obtain PPP loans. Freycar laid off 550 people with the show's plant shut down, according to a notice filed with the state of Alabama, along with its headquarters employees that alone would exceed the PPP's ostensible 500 employee cap, but Freycar availed itself of a loophole baked into the PPP. The SBA's alternative size standards, a complex set of industry by industry thresholds that have been debated for decades, allowed it to qualify with up to 1,500 workers. Originally, the SBA allowed foreign-owned applicants to count only their U.S.-based employees under the 500-person cap. That guidance changed last May, requiring foreign-owned applicants to count their entire global workforce. But plenty of companies had already gotten PPP loans and were allowed to keep them. For example, Leadvance LLC, a Chinese-owned global light bulb manufacturer operating in the U.S. under the brand name Sylvania, was approved for a $9.36 million PPP loan in April 2020. Then between May and July, it laid off 50 people while closing down a distribution center near Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Lead Van spokesperson Glenn Garcia said to an email that the layoffs were unrelated to the pandemic and in full compliance with Lead Vance's participation in the Paycheck Protection Program. Then there's Chickmaster Incubator Company, which took $1.34 million in April 2020. In June, its corporate parent, a Zurich-based private office that invests the fortune of a long-established industrialist family, announced it would combine Chickmaster with its other hatchery holdings and close the plant, laying off 68 people in Medina, Ohio by year's end. Chickmaster didn't reply to a request for comment. Man, these places are getting dirty. When they get that money, they get dirty. One type of applicant, however, still likely should not have qualified. Companies controlled by private equity firms whose total holdings exceed the SBA's size standard for the borrower specific industries. Cadence Aerospace, a supplier of aerospace and defense parts that itself has bought three companies in the last three years, is majority owned by Arlington Capital, a private equity firm managing billions of dollars. Cadence was approved for a $10 million PPP loan in April 2020 and later that month laid off 72 people at its Giddens Industries subsidiary in Washington State, according to a notice filed with the state. Arlington Capital did not respond to a request for comment. It's laying off people. And then they're talking about this whole FPUC thing. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. The show's plant was the last remaining U.S. manufacturing facility for freight car, a 120-year-old company headquartered in Chicago that had been shrinking its U.S. footprint for years. In 2008, it shuttered its plant in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. In 2017, it shut down its factory in Danville, Illinois. In 2019, it closed its plant in Roanoke, Virginia and announced it would open a new facility under a joint venture in Castanos, Mexico. Was it Castanos, Mexico? Uh, one of those, Castanos or Castanos. When executives informed investors in September that the show's facility would also close and manufacturing would shift to Mexico, 
They projected $25 million in overall savings, including a 60% reduction in labor costs. Wow, that sounds awesome. They get a $25 million savings, plus you get a $10 million PPP loan, and you shut your doors in the U.S. Hmm. Dirty. Our manufacturing transformation is now largely complete, and we have taken control. And we have taken control of our own destiny, Myers said on an earnings call in March. We have dramatically repositioned our competitive profile, and in so doing, created a new company, one that is able to win. In 2013, the future looked different. When the show's plant opened, it offered about $12 an hour to start and a chance at advancement. One worker, who asked not to be named in order to protect her future employment prospects, left a tile-making job to become a welder, constructing a variety of rail cars from hoppers to gondolas. Soon, she moved up to air brake tester, sliding underneath the massive steel vehicles to fix pipes. I went to a freight car to retire, said the worker. I wasn't planning on leaving when I got there. In the following years, safety, pay, and management concerns led to a union drive. During the campaign, anti-union employees circulated flyers warning that the plant would shut down if workers voted to organize, and in 2018, they voted decisively against it. As it turned out, the show's facility wouldn't last long anyway. Leading up to 2020, Freight Car touted the show's plant's competitiveness. A marketing video showed production lines run by industrial robots and skilled workers. This is the largest, newest, most purpose-built factory in North America, boasted Meyer, a modern state-of-the-art factory in every sense of the word. Let that be freely. But the company was still losing money to the tune of $75.2 million in 2019. When the pandemic further slowed down orders, executives started talking up the new facility in Mexico instead. The Mexico labor rate is approximately 20% of that in the U.S., Myers said on an earnings call in August 2020, and the new plant provides other sources of savings beyond just labor. Article pretty long. Also on the August earnings call, executives explained that loan proceeds had made up for some of the costs of the company's move to Mexico. Chris Apple, then the company's chief financial officer, said that the money also partially offset operating losses and inventory purchases. Myers still got his $500,000 base salary in 2020, plus stock options worth nearly that and a $1 million bonus for securing a $40 million loan from a private investment company. So this dude got $500,000, a $1 million bonus for getting $40 million from an investment company, and then they got a $10 million PPP loan, closed the doors, and shifted everything to Mexico. Man, that's dirty. That's dirty. Freight Card did not take out a second draw PPP loan. Updated rules excluded publicly traded companies. After the plant closure announcement, the air brake tester found a job making dashboards and bumpers for Toyota. It takes three times as long for her to get to her new job as the 20-minute drive she had to freight car. And she's paid $6 less per hour. Although freight car gave employees a few thousand dollars in severance payments, she said all of hers went toward bills. It's like starting all over again, she said. If they did right by us like they did their supervisors, maybe we'd be in more decent shape than what we're in now. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty long article, but that's another angle. You know, we always talk about fraud, but you have to know that you know it was some dirty businesses in here, you know, doing employees dirty. You know, it had to be. When it comes to money, people get dirty. And the bigger the, uh, the, bigger the company, or the bigger the person, I should say, as far as the more financially astute the person is, the dirtier they are. I mean, we know a person that was recently in office that was a dirty person. They're worth billions. You know, companies doing this all the time. I mean, if your neighbor would do it to you, imagine what a multi, multi million dollar company would do to you. And they do it all the time. You get fired for nothing, you get rolled up for nothing. You know, so this is just another example of that. But then the government throwing around money 
You don't think these big time firms, these big time companies, these conglomerate companies are gonna jump in and get some of that? They gonna figure out a way to do it. They gonna find these loopholes. They that's what they pay people for to find loopholes. And then they get bonuses for these loopholes they find. But anyway, that's the other angle. They're getting money. They're not defrauding the government. They're using what the government gave them. They find that loophole. They figure out how to take the money and run. And get away with it. And it's all legal. So, that's what's happening. But again, that has nothing to do with us really. It does, but it doesn't. Because we don't need them like that. Just get your credit together. Click that credit monitoring link in the description below. Figure out your scores from all three bills. Equifax and Spirit and TransUnion. See what's on your reports. And go to do it yourself credit repair. And figure out how to dispute your information on your credit reports. Bring your credit score up where you can qualify for credit products from your financial institutions. So again, click that credit monitoring link in the description below so you can get all that information. Also, you can go ahead and you can get out here and start dashing. Click the Wealth Dash link in the description below. That way you can make $500 to $1,000 plus a week on your own time. You know it's not millions of dollars, but it's also not $400 a week from unemployment. And you don't have to worry about putting in all this information and being scrutinized for the PPP loan. This is you on your own time in your own vehicle or using a higher car vehicle by clicking the wealth higher car link below and you have him making five hundred to a thousand dollars plus per week and while you're shopping with the money you made from dashing you can click the cash back link in the description below and get cash back on your items like I do all the time and if you want to know how I got five properties for five thousand five hundred dollars click the be free link in the description below subscribe to the channel subscribe to it's a and as always until the next video let's get this money